I still use Micro Four Thirds cameras for exactly the same reason that I went over to them eight years ago. They were then and remain the most attractive and intelligent compromise of size, weight and image quality available. The introduction of mirrorless cameras from Nikon and Canon implies to me that the mirrorless camera is how they see the future. I have to say I agree. The modern camera is essentially a dedicated imaging computer. Photographers of the future will consider the DSLR an imaging computer with a mechanical flapping mirror in the same light as the duck-billed platypus was when it was first discovered. With a mammal's body and a bird's beak, they thought it must be a hoax, the handiwork of a mad taxidermist. Lately, I'm being asked if I'm tempted to change systems now that Nikon and Canon are embracing the mirrorless concept for the professional grade models. Actually, no. Mirrorless or not, they have the 36 by 24 mm full frame sensors, as do Sony and as do will apparently Panasonic shortly. Mirrorless lenses can be more compact because they don't have a moving mirror to contend with. Nevertheless, they cannot alter the laws of physics. A full frame lens needs four times the light to service the larger sensor. A 25mm f1.4 standard lens for micro four thirds needs an 18mm diameter front glass. A 50mm f1.4 standard lens for full frame needs a 36mm diameter. It has to be bigger, therefore it has to be heavier. That was plainly foremost in the minds of the engineers who mapped out the micro four thirds standard. With a smaller sensor, you can have a tiny body like the Panasonic GM1, or a meteor one like the Olympus EM1 Mark II, or Panasonic G9. But it is a choice, with the minimum size being more a matter of practical ergonomics than imposed by the sensor as with a full frame model. With hindsight, I could see that the catalyst behind my decision to ditch the DSLR was the change in my photo viewing habits as much as Micro Four Thirds itself. In May 2010, the iPad launched in the UK. I found it simply the best way of viewing my pics, with its 1028 pixel width, roughly 8 by 6 inch screen. It was brighter than a print could ever be, more dynamic, in character more like viewing a transparency on a light box than a print. I also noticed that using it, I could tell no difference between pictures taken on the DSLR, or the little GF1 I bought as a backup. I didn't go over to Micro Four Thirds totally until the GH2 came out. While I was no longer covering world events and show business professionally, I still needed better handling, more professional feeling equipment. The GF1 had shown me that the Micro Four Thirds sensor had way better IQ than was strictly necessary for digital viewing. The GH2 eased my handling doubts. It wasn't perfect, but it was much imaging computer as camera and it struck me as the future of picture taking even then. My DSLR went on eBay. Since the GH2, Micro Four Thirds has moved on. Olympus have added Phase Detection AF to their EM1 Mark II, and Panasonic have given us depth from defocus to aid continuous focus tracking. It is true that Micro Four Thirds models cannot keep up with the tracking autofocus of the very best DSLRs, but that applies to the full frame mirrorless models too. The lens system has expanded from the original consumer grade lenses by adding a raft of professional standard lenses like Olympus's 40-150mm f2.8. My overall reasons for staying with Micro Four Thirds are the same as they were when I bought the GH2. The system remains the best available compromise between image quality and size. I can go up my bicycle with my main camera, the Panasonic G9, and a set of three fast or fast-ish lenses covering from super wide to 200mm telephoto in a small bag. In reality, Two zooms do most of the heavy lifting, the 8-18mm f2.8-4 Panasonic zoom, and one of the 40-150 Olympus 50-200 or 35-100 to 8 Panasonics. For street work, I take my GX9 with Olympus 17mm f1.8, a modern day take on a Leica street outfit. All it lacks is the sticky shutter button from sprayed crystal champagne, and the rotting caviar thrown up on it by wasted Russian oligarchs. If I'm going out with no particular intention of taking pictures, my GM1 or Olympus EM10 Mark III with Panasonic 12-32 and 35-100 mini lenses slip into my shoulder bag. For a female, they'd slip just as happily into a normal handbag. All of this with no practical compromise on image quality, quality which for my purposes, publication, stock or online viewing, even for big prints, exceeds what I need. I found my view underlined when I watched a neat test involving a print lab professional by the School of Photography. There's a link to it on screen now. 
The most often quoted criticism of Micro Four Thirds is the inability to achieve ultra shallow depth of field. It's a bit of a half truth. The availability of high speed lenses of f2 and better yields shallow enough depth for most photographers. The biggest deficit is when using an f2.8 standard zoom, where at 35 or 40 mm, it becomes difficult to use selective focus techniques. A little judicious field blur in Photoshop is a help here. All's fair in love and photography. But it's not ideal, I agree. For my work, more depth of field is more often than not a benefit, though. We photographers have more choice of cameras and formats than ever now, but for me, the mirrorless systems are by far the best choice with their superb EVFs, technical capability and matchless versatility. Of mirrorless, four thirds is the most pragmatic choice. Full frame reigns for technical quality. APS-C is a bit of a halfway house, and while having some very good cameras, it doesn't offer notably better IQ than micro four thirds, but still needs larger lenses. Some good cameras there, nevertheless. So, it's micro four thirds or full frame. Given that the technical quality of full frame is redundant for prints 30 inches across, internet or tablet viewing, I can't see any advantage for me. But to be able to carry a sophisticated camera body, backup, full focal range of lenses, and not even need a proper camera bag, to be able to carry that outfit without shoulder or back strain, to be able to sling it over my back and cycle around the city, to be able to shoot everything from time lapse to 60 frame per second sequences, instant focus single shot to 4K video, to have a choice of bodies and lenses from slight to ample, from street to studio, all interchangeable to mix and match. Well, if someone comes up with a mirrorless full frame that can do all that, I'll buy it the day it comes out. Meantime, the way I see it is that just as the Who are maximum R&B, Micro Four Thirds is maximum photography. See, not only does MFT make me a better photographer, it makes me a better rapper too. Thanks for watching.